Good morning everyone and welcome to my little video tutorial on how to mount the La Finestra del Tempo months. These are um, the patterns by Crosset Agogo. I will link them below if you have come across this video tutorial and are interested in the patterns. They are by Crosset Agogo and there are three patterns that you purchase each pattern having four of the months of the year on it. They're very detailed and beautiful patterns and um, we have been working on them since the month of August 2021 in a sal, a stitch along, um, which has the hashtag on Instagram of hashtag Finestra del Tempo Sal. So if you have popped over here and are interested in having a little look, you can use that hashtag on Instagram to see what everyone has been up to. Some folks have started with January, and some folks have started with whatever month suited them best. This tutorial is at the request of some of my uh, regular Floss Tube video um, viewers, uh, just to show them how I create this flat kind of mount for my finished stitches. And I am planning to just display them on this little easel. So this easel was, is available in the UK in The Works, which is a kind of bargain bookshop, craft shop, all kinds of things shop. <laughs> um, so it's available in The Works. It comes with a little tiny canvas on it and it costs the princely sum of one pound. So if you are in the UK and interested, that's what this is. I'm sure you'll be able to find these in target dollar spots all those wonderful places that i get very jealous that you us viewers have and spotlight in um, australia um, i'm sure you all have somewhere and then i am planning to use this little mount just to rest the easel mount to rest my finished stitching on so the plan for this tutorial is to show you how to lace mount the stitching onto a piece of mat board and then how to create the two fabric mounts the front one and then the backing mount i am going to add a little disclaimer here and now and just tell you that there are lots more experienced finishers than me around sharing tutorials on um, how to mount and frame your work. Um, so I do hardly recommend that you go and view some of them. Vonna Pfeiffer is um, fabulous and has all the tutorials that you could ever want um, on her on her channel, The Twisted St Stitcher. Sorry, itchy eye, it's morning. <laughs> I'm winking at you. Um, yes, try Vonna's tutorials, have a look at Java Girl Stitches. Christy has wonderful finishing ideas and of course, Priscilla and Chelsea over at Stitching with the Housewives have done lots and lots of tutorials too. So this morning, I'm not claiming any expertise. I'm just sharing with you what I do to achieve this finish. It will be based on the principles of things that Vanna and Priscilla um, have done, um, but uh, perhaps just adapted um, to how I needed it to work for me. So I hope that you find it helpful. And if you have stitched the months on 16 count or 32 count, then my measurements will work to give you this finishing look, this finishing size. If you have stitched on a different kind of fabric, then please don't use my measurements. You can use all the principles of the makeup, but um, please don't use my measurements because they won't actually be helpful to you but you'll you'll be able to get an idea i hope as we go through um this tutorial and uh, understand then how, what way you want to cut and size your own cards because because of course you could have a broader mount than this at the back or you could have more of a margin on here so this tutorial sizes only work for this size and shape of finish but the principles are all adaptable so my second disclaimer is that I'm not exactly set up for the videography required for um, decent tutorials. So I'm going to do my very best to intersperse some overhead shots along with um, just holding things up to show you as I 
as I go along. And I do hope that I explain everything well. If, if anything isn't clear or you have other questions, please don't hesitate to drop your question into the comments box below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So I have January ready and I have February ready. And today it is time to make March ready. So let me start by showing you what tools and materials you will need. So here are the tools that I use when I am making this little finish. I have a ruler for keeping things nice and straight. I have some glue and a glue brush. I don't use hot glue, but you can. Hot glue and I are not a safe mix. So this is what I use and it has worked well. But you can by all means use hot glue if you prefer. I have some crochet cotton and a needle. My crochet cotton is just in a little bowl so that it doesn't roll away while I'm working with it. And I have a nice sharp pair of scissors. Next, you will need your fabrics and your stitching and your boards for mounting. So you can see that we have the stitched, finished stitch piece and it's been nicely pressed. We have two pieces of fabric and they have also been cut and pressed. And then below the fabrics and stitching, you can see the different boards that I use. So for the stitching, I'm using a little piece of matte board. That is just the matte board or mount board that you'll find with art supplies. And it's not sticky or anything like that because we're just going to lace the fabric. If you wanted to use sticky and you're happy to use sticky on your fabric, on your stitching, um, then by all means you can. Priscilla and Chelsea use it all the time and they um, don't have any problem with it. I just am an embroiderer, so I am used to lacing and that's something that I do. So I will lace so it's not sticky. The other two boards are sticky boards. You can see that I've peeled back their, their, um, their adhesive covering and those are sticky boards. Now, the measurements for all of these will work for you if you have stitched on 32 count or on 16 count. So please remember that. Please don't use my measurements if you have stitched on a different count. I'm going to insert here two slides. One will be the list of the tools that you need and one is the list of the cutting measurements for the fabrics, your finished piece of stitching and the boards. Please screenshot those for future use if you are interested. Okay, first up, we're going to lace mount the stitching onto the board, the mat board. As you can see here, hopefully, that my mat board is cut a quarter of an inch bigger all the way around. Bigger than the margins of my stitching, the edges of my stitching. So I'm going to have a quarter of an inch margin all the way around my stitching. And you can see that here in this finished piece for February. So the trick now is to try and get a nice straight line. So we're going to pop the mount board on. And if I can do it like this, which is very tricky, <laughs> then I can mount it in. Hopefully that will be about a quarter of an inch all the way around. So I've just grabbed it like this. And I know that you're seeing it upside down, but the idea here is, can I get a nice straight line? And that's pretty good actually. So I'm gonna hold it there and then wrap the top. And just have a little look as you go along and fiddle and adjust until you are satisfied that it's straight. So mine needs a little bit of a shift on the left side. There we go. So when you have positioned it straight, then lay it straight flat back down on your board. Keeping it together like this and then we're going to start lacing it in this position. Now, there are good lacing tutorials out there and I am by no means an expert. 
I will link a couple down below. Carolee has recently, Carolee of Stitching is Elementary, has recently posted a lacing tutorial, which is very like the way that I do it. And she also sourced on her uh, previous video to that, um, where she found her inspiration from. And I will link those tutorials as well if you want to see how it is done um, a little bit more professionally than me. <laughs> So I have my needle and my crochet thread. I use crochet thread or upholstery thread. Um, at the minute, this is all I've got. My upholstery thread ran out, but something a little bit heavier than your regular sewing thread um, because you're going to be pulling and lacing tight and taut and you, want, uh, you don't want it to snap in the middle of all of your hard work. So I pull a length out of the bowl a good long length and I don't cut my piece which means that I can continually adjust the lacing without having to have stops and starts as I go. So I'm going to start my lacing by putting a stitch. I'm really sorry that my camera work isn't good enough to show you this as I'm working on it, but I will try to show you in just a minute um, how it goes on. So I've started at one corner of my fabric, tur the turnovers of my fabric, and I'm moving across to the other side and back and back and across, back and across. And I am basically just creating a lacing stitch about half an inch apart maybe. You could go a quarter of an inch apart if you preferred. And I'm just pulling my thread as I go. I'm just going to show you in a moment when I get a few more laces in. Um, maybe I will try to do one with the board upright so that you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Okay, so here we go. So I have quite simply just needle in about a quarter of an inch away, half an inch away, sorry, from the previous stitch, bringing it over, <laughs> it's very hard to do like this, um, over and under and pull. Okay, so we're going to, I'm going to continue lacing all the way up to the top. I do have plenty of thread. I've actually pulled too much at this, um, for this little project, but that's fine. So, now I've got laced all the way from the bottom to the top. I'm just going to adjust my threads so I don't want to waste all of this thread so I'm going to pull it back through. We'll just adjust the top threads as we go. You're getting a good view of my double chins here. I should put the board in front of it. <laughs> okay so here we go. This is a better uh, tail end of the threads and I'm going to knot this here so that I can pull the other bits of lacing tight. So put a good um, I usually put a good double stitch in and then maybe put a little knot in as well, just to hold everything where you want it to be. Okay, so there we go, a double stitch and a knot. Yeah, my hands are in the way. But you can see that there, a little double stitch and a knot. And now, I'm going to pull the top threads of the lacing just to take away all that excess because I did start with too much thread this time. Okay, so pulling the top threads, hope you can see. Sorry, I'm gonna move this way slightly so the light is not bleaching this out. Pulling the top threads, pulling it in, 
And then the last thread we put off. My apologies, folks. Okay, so now we've got the lacing. It's not as tight as I want it to be in the end, but we've taken away most of the slack. So now we can cut this piece of thread. And leave ourselves enough just to be able to fasten it off in a moment. So before you fasten it off, you want to just give another little check, turn it around and have a little look and see, are you happy? Is it running straight? Does it need a little bit of adjustment, which this one does need to pull up slightly on this side? So you still have room at this stage to fiddle and make adjustments and pull everything a little bit straighter. And I think I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to just wrap the sides, just pull it at the sides and see I've got too much on this side. So I need to just shuffle the board a little bit. Let's see if that helped. That's a little bit better. These are tiny shifts in the measurements, but they do make all the difference to your eye when you're viewing how straight it is. Now, the perfectionist will get the ruler out and measure everything, but I have discovered that you can be there for hours if you do that. <laughs> so I work with what's good enough. I am a perfectionist by nature, but I'm working hard against that. <laughs> so I think that that looks pretty good for me. And I'm happy with that. So I'm going to finish off this piece of lacing with a knot. I'm going to pull it tight. Make sure everything is nice and tight. Pull, 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 pull. I'm just pulling like you would with shoelaces. I'm sorry that I can't hold it and show you at the same time. Okay, I've pulled it really nice and tight now. And I'm going to fasten this off with my needle um, and also with another double stitch and knot. So keep the tension nice and tight as you finish your stitch, as you finish the lacing and your double stitch and your knot. Okay. And then snip your thread, take the excess away. The excess on the other end as well. And there we go. So that is finished top and bottom and I was happy with how it's wrapped at the side. So now we're going to do exactly the same steps by folding over and lacing top to bottom. Now, at this point, you obviously want to take care of these corners. So you want a really nice fold that brings your fabric in so that this fabric is not showing, do you see what I mean? You don't want it to show over the top of your front piece. So you want to tuck that fabric down in nice and tight and you'll have it looking like that. So it just takes a little bit of fiddling, but it is entirely possible, <laughs> okay? So that is what I am going to work on now. And it's just lacing back and forward exactly as we did for the first lot of lacing. And I will come back and show you in a moment just how it finishes off. Okay, so when I'm about halfway down the lacing process, I just want to double check before it's too late <laughs> that everything's still sitting nice and even and looking nice and straight. As I said before, it's really hard to achieve perfection on this, so be kind to yourself. <laughs> I think it needs a little shift just that way at the top there, which we can still do. We've still got time to do that. There we go. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to keep lacing until I'm finished. I finally got everything all laced, so you can see it doesn't look too bad in terms of being straight and it's all nice and tightly laced. And these, uh, these sides are, corners are tucked up so that they don't show 
above or below the fabric. So everything's going to be nicely tucked in. So that's your stitching piece ready. Okay, next you will need to create the two fabric wrapped mounts. So you have one which is going to be the front mount and one which is going to be the back mount. I've cut my back mount uh, about an eighth of an inch smaller than the front and that just means that you don't have a risk of it showing from the front when you have it all mounted. So this bit is nice and easy. You take the two pieces, I'm going to insert the sizes up here, the two pieces that will be your front mount. Okay, so this piece is nice and easy. We are basically going to take some sticky board and we are going to stick our fabric on and wrap it around. So first of all, take the sticky backing off your sticky board and you can see the machine on the gluey part. <laughs> and I've got my fabric right side down on the border table. Okay. And then we're going to pop this on here, giving even margins all the way around. I think I left about an inch all the way around. So we're going to pop it on and press it down. Then I'm going to flip it over to the right side and I'm just going to smooth it out and press down so that there aren't any wrinkles. There we go. Okay, so that's the first piece. Okay, and you're going to do exactly the same with the second piece of fabric and the second piece of sticky board. So the fabric is placed face down. Take the adhesive paper off your sticky board and put the sticky side onto the back of your fabric, leaving yourself pretty even borders all the way around. Press it down firmly, turn it over, and then press out any wrinkles. Now that I've got the sticky mount on both pieces of fabric, our next task is to wrap the excess fabric around the back of the sticky mount board and glue it in place. So I'll show you how to do that. So the first thing I want to do is take care of the corners. Okay, the corners can be tricky. So we're going to fold them in. We're going to put tiny little blobs of glue on the corners of the board and then we're gonna fold the corners down. So just bear with me while I show you that. Again, here you can use the hot glue gun if you're proficient in its use, I am not. <laughs> so I am going to just add little blobs of glue at the corners. Okay, hopefully you can see. I use this brush, which is just a cheap children's uh, gluing paintbrush and it just helps to spread the glue a little bit so that I don't have too much glue oozing out of places. So I've spread the glue at my corners and I'm now going to tuck them down. So I want a nice a nice straight even pull on that corner so that I've got a nice 45 degree angle or as close to as I possibly can up here. Okay, and the same all the way around. There we go. So the amount of glue that I've used isn't oozing through this fabric. Sorry, it isn't oozing through the fabric, but it is catching the fabric, which is all I wanted to do. I wanted to catch and hold. And I've got pretty good 45 degree angle corners. Next up, we're going to glue down the sides and across the top and bottom. So a little bit of glue all the way around. Again, not too much. You don't want it oozing everywhere, but you still want plenty to catch. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing. 
There we go. Okay, and again, I'm going to use my brush just to spread that around a bit so it doesn't get too gloopy in any one particular area. It is a challenge to do this at this angle, folks. <laughs> and it's much quicker to do it the way you should do it, which is flat on the table. <laughs> I use my quilting mat just to protect my table and uh, give it a good wash afterwards to make sure the glue is away. So next up, we're just going to fold up the fabrics. Now this is gonna take a bit of work and I am going to do it on the flat, but I want to show you just be very careful, fold it up nice and tight all the way up. Okay. And you're gonna do that all the way around. When you're working at your corners, Try to bring them in nice and tight so that you have a nice meet together. You might need to sort of press and fiddle with the corners a little bit. Even Priscilla has to fiddle with her corners. <laughs> and we're gonna push that all in nice and tight, fold it over so that there's a good stretch on the front. So I'm going to just finish that off and show you how it looks in a moment. So here we go. From the front, it looks nice. The corners could be a little bit tighter you can see it could be a little bit pointier so what we're going to do is work them so you just press and pull and press and pull and honestly it does happen it does pull them in a little bit i mean you're not going to get a perfect perfect point well maybe you will in which case let me know your secret <laughs> but you can see hopefully you can see that i'm pulling that one in a bit and it's a bit tighter than it was previously just what you don't bend the mount board while you're doing this you don't want to have a big crease in your mount board so it's firm pressure but gently gently at the same time so i'm working pulling those corners in a bit if you find that they're not sticking and you maybe need a little tiny bit more glue in the back to just to bring the fabrics together and make them stick then go ahead and do that i don't really need more fabric it's just a case of pulling things a bit tighter, especially up there at the corners. That one is quite wide, but we can push and fiddle till we get there. And then this one. So can you see what I mean by it's wide? It's like there's a little squared off piece at the corners if the point has been missed. But if we can pull and shuffle our fabric a little bit, there, then it is much better. You can kind of see it against my skin. <laughs> that, that's a much better point than it was a few seconds ago. So that is my first board and the edges are all glued in at the back. So we don't need to worry too much about what this looks like as long as it's secure, because we're going to have another piece attached to it. So that is the first piece. And we do exactly the same then with our second piece. So I'll be back in a moment when I have that done. Now that we've got both of our pieces of sticky board fabric wrapped, I'm going to take the board that is very slightly bigger. You can see one is slightly bigger than the other. I'm going to take the bigger one and I'm going to mount up. Oh, sorry, we loose thread there. I've taken some glue and added it to the stitched piece. And I'm going to make sure with my ruler that when I lay the stitched piece on, I'm going to get it nicely centered. So I want to have a quarter inch borders all the way around. So it's hard for me to show you that right now, but I will show you. So I have gently set the glued piece on top here and I want to work and make sure that I've got a nice level quarter inch so you can see that's not quite level. Maybe you can't see, sorry. Not quite level, it needs to be pushed down on the side, this side here where my thumb is, where the number is. So you push down slightly. So I'm going to get that nice and straight on my board and then I'm going to press down heavily to try to get the glue to adhere the fabric and the stitching together. So I'm just checking all of my borders are even all the way around. That's looking good. 
and I'm pressing quite hard to try and get the glue to attach to the fabric. So this bit can be tricky just to get it to stay where you want it. Nothing, no other reason than it's just tricky to get it to adhere. And you can see that where you had the folds, the final folds in of your fabric, you've got a little bit of a gap, so you're not going to get that to stick. And that's why I like to fold the sides in last, because when it's upright, you don't see that. Very few people look down on your piece, so that's where you would see it. You might have more people catch it from the side, but you don't have that. So on. now that you have your stitch piece stuck to your front mount, you want to add the back mount. Okay. And the simple way to do that is just to pop some glue on the smaller back mount. Again, about a quarter of an inch all the way around and a little bit in the center it just helps it to catch in the center as well and again i use the brush the brush just helps to make it tacky and prevent oozing uh, or prevent the chances of it doesn't eradicate it completely but i have very little oozing when i use the brush and then we're just going to put the two pieces together. Remember that the back piece is very slightly smaller than the front. So we just want to get that all lined up really nicely. You see, it's all within the margins so that it's not going to show from the front. Now, because you have all these folds of fabric, it can be tricky sometimes to get these to actually catch and you might have to hold them like this for a minute or two just until the glue turns tacky and catches. So I tend to hold on both sides like this <laughs> just for a minute or two to give it a better chance. And then what's really going to help is if we take this piece and we set it face down on top of the ironing board. That's not going to squish squish your stitches because they're going to be in the soft paddedness of your ironing board cover. So face down on your ironing board and then we're going to set something really heavy on the top. Now I recommend a cold iron, make sure it's cold, or um, a great big pot from your kitchen, make sure it's clean on the bottom. I use my cantilever um, sewing box actually because it's nice and heavy. And I will leave it there for a couple of hours until everything is well stuck, well adhered together. And then when that is done, I will have March mounted. So as soon as I switch off this video, I'm going to pop this on the ironing board with something heavy on the top of it just to get it to stick. But I do hope that the tutorial has been of help to you. If you have any questions, please, please ask. Um, I'm very happy to answer what I can. As I said, I'm no expert. This is just the way that I do it. And um, maybe I should have told you about the glue. This Yoohoo multi-purpose adhesive is working very well. It isn't the glue that I used to use, but I can't find that glue anymore. Um, so it has worked really well for January and February. I'm very happy with the results. So that is, if you're not using hot glue, you might consider this. Just make sure that it's the multi-purpose that you buy and it does say that it's um, uh, suitable for fabric. Um, well, it did online whenever I was purchasing it. So that's it for my tutorial. I apologize because I know that it would have been really helpful to have had overhead shots um, down while I was working and I did try my best, but I'm not a professional, so I hope you'll forgive um, the yeah the little quirks of my, of my video but I hope it has helped you I hope that if you have joined in the stitch along um, to stitch these beautiful designs from Crosette a go go uh, that you will finish them this way or if you're coming to this video at a time later than the stitch along was happening and are able to have a go please let me know um, that you tried it and hopefully that it was successful 
So I'm going to leave you there and wish you all the very best with your finishing. Take care, folks. Bye bye.